So, you're playing your favourite game and blast! Your Wi-Fi connection drops out. Now, it is no secret that Wi-Fi is far less reliable and generally far slower than a solid Ethernet connection. But, is that your only two options to be either wired up directly and go for Wi-Fi if you can't? Well, yes, but actually no. And what I want to talk to you about today is well, introducing a Wi-Fi to Ethernet component for your network. So, this is a bit of a specific case for me. Now, me, I've had to recently revamp my entire network because, well, the issues are living in a rural area and therefore getting some pretty terrible ISPs. Now, the other day, whilst I was starting to sort this out, I was talking to the Sky Engineer. Sky, by the way, is an internet service provider if you're not in the UK. And, well, what he suggested, what they sort of worked out, is using one of their own Wi-Fi boosters as a sort of in-between. From the router to within the room, because sadly I can't put cables that run through the house, because, yeah, family with it. But... As he went and talked about, Sky, unlike traditional Wi-Fi boosters, so this may be complete BS, you know, like I said, take it with a grain of salt, because it's a Sky Engineer's word, not mine. They claim their Wi-Fi booster works off a Wi-Fi mesh, using both the 5 GHz and 2.4 GHz channels to go ahead and chat back to the router. Okay, we've, I'm still with them, it's a, it's a bit iffy, but okay. And then, go ahead and plug that in to a network switch, which is where the title of this video comes from. Now, don't get me wrong, I really do hate Sky, but this piece of kit, the little Sky Wi-Fi booster from what I can tell, it's a pretty solid piece of kit. Does what it says on the tin, I haven't had too many issues with it. But, you know, as a go-in between between the internet and the local network here, it really is good enough. I'm not sure what the maximum speed is on it, but my internet speed isn't high enough for that to become an issue. Now, where it becomes interesting is once I introduce my local area network in here. As well, I recently had to, well, bite the bullet and buy a little network switch. Because before I had that, I, pretty much the only way I could go ahead and transfer files from here to the internet is plugging in directly into that. Using the Wi-Fi, which we've already talked about, is not exactly ideal, especially when you're trying to upload a couple of gigabytes at less than 2 megabits a second, which is a bit... a bit terrible. But I eventually went ahead and bit the bullet, and I bought a network switch. This is the TP-Link TS-108G. It is a gigabit Ethernet switch, and, well, it's a fairly nice little piece of kit. Whilst being fairly cheap, it still features 8 full gigabit ports, which is more than enough for my local area network, which is nice to have. It has up to 16 gigabit per second network switching in real time, which is nice to have. Traffic prioritization, which means if I am transferring a really big file over from one PC to the other PC, what you know, it'll be getting priority, therefore I'll transfer it even quicker. And, well, it's got plug-and-play functionality. What can you complain with that? So, how does it work out? As you can see, dragging this file over from here to this PC here, the only real bottleneck now is in fact our hard drives, because currently, until I upgrade, both my PCs are running on hard drives. But, despite that, we're almost getting full gigabit speeds, only being 20 megabytes below. Yeah, 20 megabytes below the max speed for gigabits. You know, divide gigabits into you know, gigabytes, yada yada yada. We're about 20 below, which isn't really that bad at all. It means that we're essentially getting the maximum performance of writing onto this one's hard drive as fast as that one can go ahead and send it. So, not bad, not bad at all. So, getting back to the topic at hand, 
why should you actually do all this? Right? Well, like I said, consistency on Wi-Fi, it's really inconsistent, but because of the way this booster works and assuming Sky isn't talking through their rear, which is completely possible, the way that works is that will go ahead and handle our inbound and outbound internet, because the way it works here is we've got around about 40 megabit downloads, uh, a bit below that, and up to 5 megabit uploads, which generally speaking you don't need gigabit for. But where this does come in handy is it now suddenly has the ability to actually create a pretty solid connection between the router and the booster that is, if I'm not mistaken, 50 megabits or more, which is more than what we need, which means no matter what, the internet connection shouldn't drop out unless there is a problem with either Sky's internet service being struggled to be provided, or the router goes down, which is very unlikely. But what this translates into is me here, if I want to you know, consume some media or whatever, well, pages load faster, I can watch full 4K video without any issues, you know, buffering or stuttering like that, because obviously I've now got a pretty solid internet connection. What this also allows is I can do network attached storage. I mean, I've already shown it briefly with dragging something off of this hard drive onto this one over here. But what this does allow is say I go ahead and build a server. I suddenly can, you know, go ahead and throw in a ton of throughputs, meaning that I could, say, store all my video files on there for editing, drag it onto one of these, and it'll be done within a couple of minutes. Not to mention, as a content creator, the whole being able to actually upload at my maximum speed without running into any sort of slowdown or connection issues is a very nice to have. Granted, for the well, 4 to 5 megabits isn't much, but it's still better than nothing. Not to mention it means that I could potentially do live streaming, which I will be doing more of in the future. And, you know, it also means that my videos get up quicker, which means I can spend less time uploading, more time actually making them for you guys. And plus, if you're running several devices, as you can probably tell I do, between me and the rest of the people who go ahead and live here, the more devices that you have wired up is an extra device that's no longer taking up a Wi-Fi channel, therefore decongesting the wireless network and hopefully increasing connectivity for everyone else that has to use that. So, yet another bonus. But, should you do this? Well, yes and no. I mean, if you are running a fairly small network with maybe only a handful of devices, and assuming that you're really not like, far away from the router, then to be honest, you probably don't need to do this. But if you're transferring large files, you've got several devices, not just a handful, it suddenly becomes a much better idea. For wiring stuff up into a network switch like this, you suddenly reduce a lot of your wireless traffic, which means you want to watch a video on your phone, it suddenly becomes a lot more doable. Same as watching a video on your PC, it's now got a very solid connection, so it's a lot more doable. Not to mention, if you do go and do this, suddenly your network actually becomes expandable and more flexible. You know, if, say, in the future, ooh, I haven't got enough ports, all you have to do is, say, either get another Wi-Fi switch, a Wi-Fi switch, a network switch, or just go ahead and get a bigger one in general, plug that in, and suddenly you've got a lot bigger expandability. Not to mention, if I'm not mistaken, if you go ahead and get wireless... No, I'm so used to dealing with wireless. If you go ahead and get network cards to go ahead and put in these, oh, what do you know, you can suddenly increase the amount of bandwidth that you have from point to point, which is, again, a very nice bonus. And, of course, lastly, if you are managing, say, a small business, small video editing production, anything that means that you've got several devices on a network that need to be able to talk to each other, well, it suddenly makes it very, very doable whether it be for adding a large network attached storage drive or server, you know, a video transcoding, you know, much like Linus Tech Tips. Either way, you will need this because it will suddenly give you the ability to do it over the network rather than having to build a way overbuilt PC to handle all the tasks in one. That's where you can go ahead and put tasks here, here, and over here, meaning that, yes, you're paying out three PCs instead of one super PC. All that does allow you to do is work on something else, whilst the other two are doing other jobs, which is mainly the main reason I've done this. Whenever 
that PC is working on something, I can also work on this PC. You see where I'm going with this. Now, the other caveat, if you wander outside of the UK, or if you can't get a fancy little Wi-Fi doodad like that, there are a couple of other options, and they're not brilliant, but they are other options. Your first potential choice is a power line adapter. Yes, you have these little adapters that you plug into your wall and they will send a network connection from wherever to wherever over power cables. That is a potential option for you, but you know, if you're living in several apartments, that might not potentially be an issue, you know, a thing that you could do due to the way they're laid out. If you have to use extensions, that won't work because you can't plug them into an extension cable. If you've got particularly poor wiring, again, it's, it's going to be a bit hit and miss. And whilst there are other Wi-Fi options that you can go ahead and do this, generally the kind of networking gear that you're going to need, well, they can generally cost a pretty penny, so it all really comes down to what you can afford, what you're willing to do, and, well, how you can work around it. Me, I got lucky, because you know, Sky, they went ahead and gave us this booster for free, because we were having network issues, and, well, since it was already sitting around the house, why not repurpose it for something far more useful? That, well, it's obviously far more important. Now, don't get me wrong, being able to run a cable directly from the router to that network switch would be far nicer, but as the great philosopher Jagger said, you can't always get what you want. And this, for whichever way you look at it, most people it's going to be a quality of life thing. Can you afford to do it? And really, do you need to do it? And just literally the last couple of closing thoughts here. You don't need to do this. I mean, even if you're running on a very slow connection though, say you've only got maybe a 5-10 megabit down, maybe one or two up, you don't need to do something like this. But what it does guarantee is you've got a far more solid connection. Yes, wiring directly is obviously op is optimal. Not everyone can do that though. Sometimes wireless just isn't strong enough because, again, issues that come into that. Running a sort of a hybrid system like I'm running, it means that yes, you're getting the maximum out of your internet, but you're also getting the maximum internally. And really, being able to do this, even on a slow network connection, say 5-10 megabits, like I've said already, you suddenly really have a lot more flexibility. You know, if you're watching a video, you're not going to be waiting every 5 minutes for it to suddenly reconnect and buffer. Instead, what you're going to be waiting for is, well, nothing, because you're going to have a very solid connection. Just being, having, no, just being able to have a solid, flawless connection, generally speaking, makes a real big difference and makes the whole network feel just a lot snappier. So, should you do it? That's up to you. Do you need it? That's up to you. But if you do, I can guarantee you things will be a lot better. You know what, I'll leave a comment for those of you that really want to see more of this stuff, whether it be how to set up a small network, you know, layouts that you can go ahead and do, and really small networking tasks in general. If you want to see more help in tutorials or all that, well, leave a comment down below, and well, I will see about doing it in the future. But I guess I am running out of time for today, so... Anyway, like the video if you like it, dislike it if you dislike it. Links to what was featured in the description down below. Don't forget to check out my Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch pages. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, that notification bell for more content from me. And, well, as always, this is the 117th Con, signing off. Have a brilliant day, folks, and I'll catch you all next time.